I would call a lake like Winnie Walleye Presentations 101. That's a walleye, ain't it? Feels like it. It looks like it. So, she's a good one. Yeah, I can see that rod laid down there really, really key. I want to show you, you're going to be a starfish, huh? Look at that. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Here you go, Tom. We're ready. Ooh, the weapons, I love it. <laughs> hey, I'm really looking forward to today. I'm fishing with a longtime friend of mine, Tom Newstrom. We go way, way, way back together. Uh, we're fishing on one of his favorite lakes. We're in northern Minnesota where he guides on a whole lot of these lakes and the lake we're going on today is Lake Winnebagosh or for short, a short way of saying that, Big Winnie. And uh, this body of water is a phenomenal body. It's one of Minnesota's gems. Absolutely. Got everything in it. We're going to be mainly fishing walleyes today. We'll talk a little bit about the environment, some of the other options that are here and uh, share with you some information on trolling, maybe do a little jigging today, uh, how Tom perceives water. As a full-time guide, you're gonna learn some things that'll help you put some more fish in the boat. That's a walleye, ain't it? Feels like it. It looks like it. Come here, Mr. Walleye. Yeah. Is it a, a nettable? Yeah, Probably. Oh yeah. yeah, nice. Oh, nice. Uh, well, there you go, Chief. Come there. There you go. You know, I'm going to give you the guide service. Look at that. I'm oh. going to give you the spinner back. I love it. Look at a nice little chunker. That's what all these boats are. There's a bunch of boats up on a point here. Yep. You know, fish like this and Winnie are, are what people come up here for. The these are the fish. perfect cutters. Yep. That's a good word for it, isn't Absolutely. it? A cutter? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we started off doing some trolling yeah 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 you know and tom right away got one one fish probably 20 inch or just a nice one and we got caught, caught some eaters i dumped one big one next to the boat you know but we did that for about two hours that's a pikey head but he said let's go try so, something a little bit different let's go up into the weeds do a little jigging i'm going to pull a few spinners might do a little rigging and we might even go deep and try a little jigging wraps we weren't up here with that spinner for, I don't know, five, six minutes, and you whacked one. It's a great delivery system. You know, you're moving water. You're kind of just exploring these weed beds and seeing what's around. And it's been working for us for so long. We've modified things a little bit with the rig. You know, it just uh, the beads really, how many beads you got on doesn't matter. But the spinner makes a big difference. And we use a lot of gold spinners. You got a little color in the water and a long shank hook. This is a... Uh, you know, side one, VMC hook, uh, long shank. You can put the minnow on, you put it in the mouth, you bring it out the gill, so the, the bottom of the hook is right off the belly of the minnow, and then you turn it, and you bring it right through. And the nice thing about it is it'll run straight. I like to pull that barb out just a little bit off the back of the minnow, so when I get a bite, I just set the hook on it and I don't miss them. But again, old school, eh, maybe you might think it is, but new way of doing it, that's the thing. It works. That's the most important thing. Now, you, now as I told you, you got to give me a little more time. Yeah, How's that did. one? <laughs> <laughs> now, he's baiting up. And he, 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 now I got now I got to stay with my jig just a little bit longer. This one is, uh, it's an inch bigger than your last one. <laughs> I got to add I a little it. bit to it, I an inch it. bigger, yeah. an inch bigger, give or Perfect. take a little bit. Yeah. You know what? But Bubba, you know what? Now you're now we're catching Winnie walleyes. The yeah, way we yeah, yeah. Be. You know, we the one neat thing about Winnie, there's a lot of ways to catch these fish here. We started off pulling plugs, you know, looking for a big fish. We did that for two hours, and it wasn't really hot in time. So you know, there's there's too many fish in here. We got to try a different presentation. And we rigged up, came up on top of the flats and started pounding them. This is, I would call a lake like Winnie, Walleye Presentations 101. What do I mean by that? Jigs, 
live bait rigs, minnows, night crawlers, or leeches on it, or spinners. That's the bread and butter. Yeah, there's an occasional spot you'll get on a cork and bite, bite on the rocks with leeches. Yeah, there's some fish that can be had pulling plugs, but this is your classic northern Minnesota walleye lake. And that, those three presentations, jigs of some kind, a, a live bait rig, or spinners, and you're gonna come out here anytime during the open water season and be able to put walleyes in a boat. Sometimes all sizes, quantities, and on some days quality or a mixture of. It's an amazing lake. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. I got a fish on. Fish on, fish on. You wouldn't mind netting my fish for me, would I'm you? I'm just the kind of guy that is more than happy to do that. Now she, she's coming in there. One more little lift. One more lift. There, there she is. Look at that. <laughs> I'm still counting the colors on here. Three pink, <laughs> three chartreuse. You know, but you said that didn't make no difference. Or does it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you, Tom. You know, we were talk, talk, talking a lot about the lake earlier, a little bit of history here on, 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 on Winnie. Uh, it, the money fish here, which is, I'm just going to release this one. The money fish here is, 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 is walleyes, like you said. You Absolutely. Say, that's why everybody comes up to all of the resorts, and there's, what, what 13 uh, resorts on? On, on the Winnie lake? and Cutfoot, yep. That make up the, the lake, and uh, uh, the rest of it is all wilderness. It's beautiful. You got the resorts, and then you got woods. <laughs> really a fascinating, fascinating area. But walleyes and perch are a, a mainstay up here. But you, you got some pretty big muskies in here. Some pretty nice northern pike. When I tell you muskies though, the state record muskie came out of here. And you know, that's something to be said because it hasn't been broken in, what is it, 50, 50 60 years? So, you know, that's a lot to be said about winning. Uh, big crappies, you pound those cra 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 crappies uh, in, in fall. Right. Yeah, you know, really nice fish. I guess there's some pretty good bluegills in here. And there's uh, shh, a bass population that not too many people come and take advantage of. But don't tell anybody about that. All right, I'm, I'm tempted to put a spinner on, but I'm going to go just a little bit longer. Why? I don't know. I just Perfect. am. You know, Tom, a lot of pe pe people would kind of scratch their head. Uh, you got a 200 horse Merc four stroke on the back of, uh, of this Lund, and uh, we are forward trolling with it. Now you're back trolling, pulling spinners. You, uh, you do a variety of different presentations, and you don't have a kicker motor uh, on here, and you can just about do anything you have to do, even though you got a small Minn Kota, uh, a trolling motor for real precise deep water fishing where you got to slow down. But uh, 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 why don't you have a kicker around here? You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, why I don't have a kicker motor. But I'll tell you, I get such great performance out of my 200 Merc four-stroke. It's just amazing. I control this thing down with smart gauges. I can get it down to the speed that I want. And, and that's the most important thing is utilizing what Mercury provides me, as, not only as an angler, as a guide, and it gives me the material and the stuff that I need to slow down, speed up. I control cranks. I can pull spinners backwards. I can tone it down. And that's the thing, because speed a lot of times is a real important thing. And I'm going at a constant speed, and it's really important, especially pulling spinners, that you do that. So, you know what? I've been a Mercury guy for four decades. I love my Mercs, and I always will. The main delivery system for a spinner rig is a bottom bouncer or a three-way system. But today we're fishing a finesse spinner rig around weed beds. The rig is pretty simple. A 1 8 ounce bullet sinker, a bead, then a barrel swivel that is attached to a 14 inch VMC Revolution hex spinner rig. These rigs have a unique clevis system that allows you to change blades without retying. Gold is the color of the day. But that can change with light conditions, wind, or even water clarity. We're just making a long cast, then moving slowly. As with any presentation, speed is critical. Tom is back trolling at about 1.4 miles an hour to keep the rig skipping over and around the top of the weeds. This rig, by the way, is amazingly snag resistant. 
Well, you've been a guide all your life, uh, life out here, and you see times out here that you kind of scratch your head. You think we know a lot about fishing. And, oh. and then you get somebody like the lady you were talking about the other day, fish on, fish off. But she was spanking them. She had it all figured out that day after fishing with you so many times that you said to her, she was catching fish, out fishing her husband, and she was doing something slightly di different. Color was part of it, and she lit up the day. She's, uh, she's a good one. Yeah, I can see that rod laid down a really, really key. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Yeah, when I pulled back on her, she uh, definitely, she dug in, you know what I mean? Anybody coming out with you on a guide, tri guide trip to Winnie that would get a fish like that, gonna, gonna add, they're gonna be a happy camper for the day. And we want happy people. Yep, well, you guides there want happy is. people. Yep. Here, 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 come here. Come here. Watch your net. There she is. This is, this is a, 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 a fun trip. It's been a long time since I guided it. I'm kind of getting back to my, my roots. <laughs> I am counting. I'm counting. A, you, know, you know, I can't keep. He's beating me like a Salvation Army drum with these fish. I'm telling you. And this is a nice one. This is a nice one. You, you know, Winnie has got such a strong population of fish. Now, we got a slot on here. You, you said, I think it was 17 to 23. 18 to 23. 18 to 23. And there's a lot of fish. This is a nice fish. And uh, uh, I'm going to get her back re re real quick. We don't want to. Oh, boy, that's a nice eater, you know. That's a real big eater. Too big of an eater. She gets going back. Talk to me a little bit about the stocking program and natural reproduction on this lake. It's, it's, it's unique in the fact that, well, you gave me some numbers yesterday that flabbergasted me how many walleyes are put in here. You know, the interesting thing about the cutfoot hatchery, and trust me when I tell you this, that let, just right around 50% of all the walleyes that are stocked in the state of Minnesota come out of the cutfoot hatchery. That, that's a big number when you think about it. It is one of the most prolific producers of walleyes in the entire, in probably the entire country. But the thing is, is they have to put 10% of what they take out at, at, at the nets, and they have to put it back in. It's kind of a, a rule of thumb on all the different hatcheries across the state. And like I say, Cutfoot is, is probably the largest and most prolific. But, you know, you're looking at probably 10 to 12 million walleyes are put back into Lake as Fry, besides all the natural reproduction. And you look at that over the years and over the years and how this lake just continues to produce. It's, a, it's amazing. It's an amazing body of water and a fish we're catching today is a perfect profile of what I'm talking about. Winnie is a complex maze of underwater points, sunken islands, weed beds, and rock piles. When you're looking for walleyes around weeds, weed composition and location is critical. First off, we're focusing our efforts on weed beds that are in the main lake. Secondly, the best weed beds tend to be sparse patches of weeds with a mix of hard bottom areas scattered through it. As a general rule, walleyes really like cabbage weeds if they're available. Side imaging and 2D sonar help us identify the right stuff. Once we isolated in an area that's holding fish, Tom keeps making repetitive passes over these same edges. It's interesting to note that we started the day fishing shallow rocks with no bites. Tom said, let's experiment around the weed beds, and we started catching fish right away. That's where these fish are hiding. These are those ambush points, and that, those are really essential. If we were fishing on a flat that had no, no cover on it at all, I doubt if we'd be catching any fish. There's a fish right there. So, you know, it, it, it's really, I think, important you have two units, or you could split screen too. You know, the one thing about Humminbird and the Helix, you can split screen, and I can have the same thing on my tracking system here. I can put it over here, and, and I can have my graph on this side. So I just like the two units. It gives me double uh, coverage on it, and that's one of the important things, especially when you're guiding. And then I can look and see. I can watch my customers. I know when they got a fish on, but that tracking system right there, when you're on the same trail and you're catching fish, I want to tell you, there ain't nothing like it. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That's a decent Tom, fish. Huh? You, you, that thing didn't even hit the bottom. I don't want it to. I'm telling you, it's amazing. 
He just said, I dropped mine over to Sa's side. And he said, oh, I flipped mine out a little bit. I guarantee you that thing didn't get to the bottom and that fish hit it. You come to a new big lake like this, you get a guide. Give time a call. These guides will save you a lot of time. They teach you a whole lot really fast. It's money well invested, let me clue you. Ooh, nice one, nice one, but nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> Tom, this is a lot like work, bro. Well, you see this one, folks. This is another, I mean, this is getting to be ridiculous. It's ridiculously good. You're gonna have to untangle this one. That's I no got problem. a little bit, look at the size of this one, folks. Whoa, hold still, fish. <laughs> uh, hang on, I wanna show you. You're gonna be a starfish, huh? Look at that. You know, we came out, I, I told you earlier at the beginning of this show, I said, I can't wait to get, I've been looking forward to getting with Tom out here on Winnie. We've been talking about it for a long time, you know, to make something happen. You know, we ran through a couple different presentations. We w went from the, the b b pulling plugs, yeah, 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 you know, with the new uh, our baits from Rapala, and we caught some nice fish on it, and then we did some jigging, and then we got into hit the mainstay here, spinnering, spinnering, which on this lake this time of the year is Unbelievable. You know, while he's moving down slow, you'll probably notice we're both pulling, we're both using spinning rods for what I would term a somewhat of a finesse bite with the spin, with, 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 with the with, with the spinners, light line spinners like this, and uh, uh, we're both using Daiwa Fuegos, which is a honey of a reel for this. Not to mention. It's incredibly priced right. And uh, I mean, for walleye fishing, and we're both using 20s, and uh, uh, it, it's a sweet, sweet rig. I'm using the St. Croix 610 medium action elite rod matched up with it. And uh, uh, I'm pulling 10 pound test mono on mine. And a real simple combination, and quite deadly. A lot of people would be pulling, I know, and spinners like to use bait casting. But this, you know, light line in like this, I think we're doing really good with the spinning rods. I like it, and it's fun. I like that pulsation of the rod with the walleye. That doo -doo 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 -doo. And they learn at a very young age, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me get a little sucker up here. Come here, girl. Oh, yeah. Come here, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, Thomas, 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 this day was everything that I expected it to be. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking while you were fighting in this fish, that for the last four hours or so, yeah, yeah, you know, every pass we've made, we've caught like two walleyes, and, and you've been spanking them one after the other. And, and, but I mean, every pass we made, back and forth, or back and forth, back and forth with that spinner. And it's been walleye after walleye after walleye after walleye. You know, I get a lot of emails, and uh, many of them refer to the way I close our shows with some inspirational message. And I want to read you one letter or email that I got here that I get quite a few of them that are somewhat similar to it. I think you'll find this interesting. Some of you will probably relate to it. Al, born and raised a Christian after marriage, and three sons we just never could find a church we felt comfortable attending. Seems they all preach how bad you are. They didn't see you last week at Sunday services, or how Johnny's long hair looked terrible, or how Sally's dress wasn't fit for church, or how Farmer Joe has his bibs on in church. <laughs> this whole church setting, I'm, I'm disgusted with it. We moved churches several times only to find them pretty much the same. Sorry to say we just stopped going. I taught my three boys the right way to live and treat others and to always pray and believe in God. Our lives have been good except for a few ups and downs, but nothing that God doesn't help us through. What I really wrote to say is I would, <laughs> I would and could sit at church if you were giving the sermon <laughs> each Sunday. <laughs> I record all your shows, but ones that I'm not interested in, I fast forward through and look 
to your life lessons at the end. I could listen to those all day long. All in all, Al, I wanted to say your little life lesson segments at the end of the show are my church. Our family and sons, grandsons live to fish and we're on the water at least four days a week. My wife fishes some, but has always despised me watching fishing on TV, but now we'll sit and watch your show. She loves your little sermons and once asked me, where's he at? I laughed and said, don't you wish he was around here? They'll keep up the good work. God bless, Wade. I get a lot of letters and emails very, very similar to this. Now, I could answer this a lot of different ways, but I'm going to go to Scripture and just read one uh, uh, aspect of Scripture that says a lot to people that are dealing with issues like this. It's Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Are you, and by the way, I'm using the Message Bible. I love the way the Message Bible happened to address this issue. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Good scripture, isn't it? <laughs> I had to share that with you. And like I said, I get a lot of emails similar to this. Again, you get a moment this week or today, go to Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and particularly if you have a message Bible. I love the way it refers to a lot of issues of life. I had to share that with you. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Thank you.